because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Well, Jen, it's the main event uh, on Saturday night in, uh, in Newcastle. Cyrus, uh, <coughs> homecoming for you. I, I'll never forget um, that week out in Samsung, the Olympic qualifier, when you were sent ahead of Josh Kelly. I think he had a few issues outside of the ring. That main Olympic qualifier was such a tough one because all the big names are in. And of the three that you fought, I think two were in the world's top ten. You beat two of those. You felt agonisingly sure in what was and what would have been uh, an Olympic qualifier for, for you. Um, been a difficult six or seven years. You've really learned the value of, of patience. Um, it's all built to your first big test this afternoon. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's why I encourage. Oh, young lads, 22, 23, wanted to turn pro early. Yeah, I think you need them to kind of experience the heartbreak, fighting with injuries, fighting when you're hurt, getting hurt, fighting multiple days, making a weight. Uh, they're all kind of amount of for when you turn professional, and it's a hard game. So I think it all kind of seasons here and conditions here for for what's to come. Yeah, the, I, I guess dealing with those tough moments in the amateurs must help you in this scenario because it, it, I guess it's kind of alien in a way you know only a handful of fights and now you're top of the bill in front of your adoring fans I mean do you feel a sense of pressure coming into this fight at all? Uh, it's more excitement to be honest with you like because I mean I, I told you about a post that I've done for I think it was about four years ago uh, about sneaking in to ringside at the metal and now I'm headlining it so it's, uh, it's something that I've, I've always kind of pictured and visualised and I've been working hard and like I say later, like, I asked the universe for it and it served us and this opportunity came about and I'm obviously ready to take it so here we are. A hard uh, journey in the amateurs for Cyrus. Um, Chris, welcome. Been watching you for, for years. You applied your trade on uh, Paul Boyce's shows in, in the early years in Wales. You got that opportunity at prize fighter on a match and bill 2013, boxed brilliantly, and of course led to those undercards of Ricky Burns and Lee Selvin. Of course, your own opportunities. It's been mixed for you, I think, mainly through no fault of your own. Cuts has been one of the big stories of your career. You've been through more technical decisions than any fighter in recent memory, but things have come good uh, in the end. Of course, you became British and Commonwealth champion in, in 2019. Um, you too have done things the hard way. You, you know the value of, of hard work and I can sense there's a, a real respect between the pair of you heading into Saturday. Um, yeah, first of all, you know, I, my, my respect to all service, he's a good fighter and he thinks like ways of myself and going back then, I think I blew well it seemed 2013, so it's now 20, 22, 23, so it's 10 years on the game, so, you know, um, I'm just happy to get given another opportunity on such a great card in Newcastle, um, on such a good show. I do look a bit fat than the post, so I'll come by where I am now. <laughs> yeah, they need to take them a bit closer to fight, fight night, don't they? Look at that, that looks shocking, and <laughs> it's all right, if I knew we were doing this way, and that, I'd have made, made it better. But He's always smart, yeah, he shows us. No, he down. turned up, I was like, I was going on a date. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, look, we're there to do a job on Saturday. I've had a good camp, um, my team, Guy Law, Edna. Yes, I'm the older of the two, and well seasoned, so. You know, let's hopefully that can help in, in the fight on Saturday. I asked um, Cyrus there about pressure being at the top of the bill. And I'll ask you the question as well. Do you feel a, a sense, an element of pressure going into this fight, knowing that a defeat against Cyrus would, let's be honest, kind of be shattering to your career? No, mate. No one bit, you know. Um, I don't feel pressure. If anything, pressure makes me perform better. It's like with Cyrus now, he's headlining a show in his home city in front of his own fans. Everyone's going to say, is it going to go against him? No. It's going to boost him up a bit more. So I know what I've got to do. Obviously, if the, if the fight doesn't go my way, but it's an entertaining fight, you know, I know I'm in there for the big fight still. But I'm not, or I haven't been training my Nicky Nacky lose off in the gym, losing a bit of weight and getting to top condition ready to perform on Saturday and keep myself in that mix. 
I know you do your research on, on your opponents. I think you're the fourth Southport, he's four. I know Mark, who fought you the first couple of rounds, orthodox. Um, but, but his record in those last four beating Dongo, I actually thought he did easily enough to beat Tyron McKenna, and he was boxing rings around Mark, who, uh, until he got clicked with a very good shot in the fourth, but that's what, that's what happens. You know he's got plenty left, and you know you're going to have to be very good uh, on Saturday. Did you feel uh, that the Lissetto performance, it looked like things really came together for you in that fight, and all the hard work? Is that the kind of performance you're going to need to beat this man on Saturday? Definitely, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's sure he's got a lot left in the tank, mate. He's, it's not been one fight sided like fights that he's been in. He yeah. uh, showed that, like, could have swayed, could have went, could have got a position against McKenna. He's beaten Marco on points, beat uh, Ndongo, unified champion. So, you can't be on that slide that much if it was only six months ago, do you know what I mean, that like you're fighting. So, I know that's going to be a tough test and it's uh, definitely what I need in my career at this time. Um, and I think things did come together, we progressed every fight, I've kind of evolved as a fighter, I've grew into the professional kind of style of things. Me and Graham have been working very hard in the gym with Jake and Stevie, so I think it's coming together and we've built on last camp as well, so hopefully I'll see a lot of that on Saturday night. You must be over the moon with the investment and the energy that Matchroom are putting in the North East and the current crop. Now, not again, I can do this, but you can't, but Looking past Saturday and all goes well, and you get the win is the dream. Not just to be fighting at the arena, but one day to be fighting at St James's Park. St James's Park is an amazing place, isn't it? Like, and obviously, a fight there one day would be like a dream come true. But like I say in every interview, like this fight is the only fight that exists in my mind. Jenkins is the only opponent yeah. that exists in my mind. That WBA international is the only title that exists in my mind. I've never ever looked past any opponent. Uh, and that's what's suited my career, like, and I continue to do so. And Chris, just quickly, I mean, for you, what are the dreams and the d desires still at this stage in your career? I mean, a win over Cyrus then puts you back up there, you know, you get that ranking belt. Is there still plenty of desire left in the tank for you to push on and try and capture a major title? That, that is my end goal, you know, I want to go out and high. Um, what drives me in this game is my children, and I've got three young boys, and. That's what drives me in the game. So if I can keep winning, um, they can say that is a champion, you know. So now I gotta go get through Saturday and the tough fight with Cyrus, and then hopefully we can move on to a few more fights before saying no, ciao for now. I'll tell you what, they can be proud of you already, mate. That's for sure. Yeah, no, you promised uh, you'll, you'll bring the belt home to your kids. I guess if things get tough on Saturday, that could be um, what, what starts to wheel you through those those difficult patches and nothing there, no, no way you haven't been before. No, well, like, you know, the last fight I had against Tyrone McKenna, but Tyrone you know, you know uh, obviously I got clipped by Marco. Stupid mistake, but you know what happens, but they they they're gonna drive me on Saturday. I know I put the work in the gym and I know we put the work in the gym. So we're just gonna be an entertainment and entertain the fight for the fans. Is that the dream for Matram? Eventually a St James's Park show? Yeah, it's what every fighter dreams of, it's what we want to deliver for deliver for the fighters. You know, as Cyrus says though, his eyes fully set on Saturday night. He's going against Chris who's had you know, 32 fights. He's he's been in tough, tough fights in his last few against high-end opposition. So this is you have to respect Cyrus, he's a special fighter that he wants to take these challenges, but they're the kind of steps he needs to take if he wants to move through the sport at the pace he, you know, he, he's aiming to. Um, you know, Chris is coming to win the fight, as he said. But yeah, long term, that's the dream St James's Park. You know, we've seen, as I keep going back to, those nights we had with Ritson at the arena were special. But can you imagine, I don't know, 60,000 in there would be, well, we'll get sick, we'll sneak 60 in. Uh, yeah, it'll be a, a special, special night. Yeah, it'll be perfect. Uh, Frank, thank you very much. Chris, Cyrus, pleasure to see you both. All the best for, for Saturday night. Like 10 rounds, uh, WBA ranking belt. Uh, on the Refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot up at it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. Win it, they guilt wins. Right, the bounce is guilty. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 